many of you have heard us promoting San Diego in our region for the past year. We've talked about our passion for collaboration. We've talked about our passion for technology. We've talked about passion for our unique neighborhoods. And really, we talk about innovation and opportunities, opportunities throughout the region. And the world is starting to take notice. National Geographic has selected San Diego as one of the world's smart cities. And this is big, because who knows the world better than the experts at National Geographic? And I really want to thank Joe Terzi of the San Diego Tourism Authority, Mark Cafferty of the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation, and all of our San Diego partners and local businesses and innovators who have worked very hard to make this happen. This is a unique honor and one that we are very proud of. San Diego is currently the only city, the only city in the United States to receive such a distinction. And in fact, it's the only city in all of North America. This documentary highlights our brightest residents and our most innovative companies. It not only highlights those who are working to make San Diego a better place, but those literally who are working to change the world. And this documentary will debut on April 25th. And as I alluded to with some of you earlier, it is going to be shown in more than 60 countries across Europe, Asia, Australia, and South America. In all, it is projected that the documentary will reach an astounding 247 million households, talking about what's happening right here in San Diego. It will also be promoted on the National Geographic Channel's Facebook page, which I'm told is the number two media brand on Facebook, with more than 50 million fans. This is a great deal for our region to be promoted like we're going to be. This is big news. And it's going to give us the type of international visibility that we've never seen before. And so starting today, National Geographic will begin to air and promote this special around the world. And so we'd like to give you a sneak peek of the first promotional video, which you'll be starting to see. Where desert meets ocean lies one of America's fastest growing cities. A place where talent, innovation, and technology thrive amidst a relaxed way of life. San Diego. Join Andrew Evans in a city at the heart of cutting edge invention and discover how this unique, forward thinking community has become a pioneer for the world. World Smart Cities San Diego. Coming soon on National Geographic Channel. We started over 19 months ago with this idea when National Geographic came into town and talked to us about the project and how important it was and the great match that they thought San Diego was for this great project. We immediately uh, took a look at what they were talking about and the first call we made to, was to our great friends at EDC. We knew, we knew we needed to have Mark and the team at the table and it blossomed from there. So from our standpoint, as the mayor mentioned, uh, this gives us tremendous is international exposure that we have never had before. And if you think about it, you know, almost 300 million households, and it will air five times in each one of those uh, countries, and then it airs twice in the U.S. And in addition to that, as was mentioned, there's tremendous distribution on all of the channels that uh, National Geographic has, and it'll run significantly through their programming for the next six to nine months. So we couldn't be happier. Uh, great opportunity. Some people talk about Super Bowls or All-Star Games or whatever happens in the, in the great uh, events of, of our lifetime, um, none of those events, while they're very spectacular, would have an impact on San Diego like an hour documentary on our great community. So we're so excited to have the opportunity to do it. We're so pleased to have so many partners with us. We're so pleased to have the opportunity to introduce San Diego to the world, and we just can't wait for it to happen. So thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thoughts or questions, uh, anyone? Take them here or one of them, Um So I guess I'm Focus on one of these documentaries, but you did have to come up with collectively a million dollars. Um, is there any sense that how does that in any way affect the credibility of a documentary that you had to pay for? Well, I'll answer that. Uh, 
to be very clear, we, we don't have and didn't have any control over the documentary. It is a National Geographic documentary. While in some cases we had conversations about trying to influence them in terms of what we thought made sense, we were quickly reminded this is a National Geographic documentary and not a San Diego directed documentary. The, the money that we raised was to make sure that we could uh, get the project out of uh, the U.S. and into these international markets, and we wanted to get the broadest distribution that we could, and we wanted repetitive opportunities in these international destinations, so the majority of the money we raised was to ensure that distribution was appropriate. And I maybe let Mark make a comment. No, I, I, I think Joe said it all in the sense that the other thing, too, is it really was a process where in National Geographic coming to us, it was very clear that no one company or no one municipality could drive that process. So even the, even the design of needing to raise the funding to do what Joe talked about was one where multiple organizations had to be involved so that you could make sure that as the funding was raised, nobody really felt like they had unique control over it. And as Joe said, every step of the way, we were reminded that this is a National Geographic Channel documentary. Lots of questions. Being so close to the south of the border, is uh, any smart people that speak Spanish? Is the world cities, smartest city in the world, in, in this United States, do, do the Spanish people collaborate into that title? What kind of participation do they have, the communities and the industry on the bilingual side of that? Well, I think when you, when you see the, the documentary, it does talk about the, the cultural diversity in San Diego as being one of its key attributes. It does talk about some of the uniqueness of the neighborhoods. It really isn't focused on any one particular culture or one, one, any, any one particular language. It talks about the innovation in San Diego. It talks about why San Diego is a smart city from a transportation standpoint. It talks about the ability to live, work, and play in the same environment, which is critical for the new generations that are looking for opportunities. And it talks very heavily about the education systems in San Diego that drive innovation and bring people to the destination for the future. Now, we have one of the stars of the documentary Hello, here. My yeah. name is Sue Mayu, and I was asked to cook on the show. And when they came and contacted me, they wanted to go to a farm. And I deliberately, deliberately told them that I wanted a small farm locally raised by a Spanish-speaking person. And Felipe Azusa, who is Mexican, he did not have to farm, but he decided to farm because he loved the land and because he wanted to continue the legacy of his ancestor. So it took a while to convince the National Geographic people because they wanted a larger local farm to be filled. But I said, no, we need to go back to the Mexican roots because that's how California began. So it is in the film, in honor of the Mexican heritage. Thank you very much. And you have a great program, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> any other thoughts or uh, questions? And certainly everybody's able to answer any questions one-on-one. Uh, uh, -on -one. So we don't have a beer question? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is great, but what is next? I mean, the world? What <laughs> <laughs> one of the... Uh, one of the highlights, Carlos, is uh, as we continue to talk about, and one of the things that I, I love talking about most as mayor is, you know, it's not just about you know, one city, it's about our region, particularly when we talk about Tijuana or the Baja. I think that's one of the reasons that we were selected. I, I was interviewed for the, uh, uh, for part of the interview. I haven't, I haven't seen the, uh, the final product. Uh, but I talk a lot about, you know, our economy, our economy is linked. San Diego and, and Northern Baja, and how we think that that's a competitive advantage for us in San Diego. Uh, one, frankly, that we think helps demonstrate to the world how you two countries can come together in synergies and cities leading the way on that, Tijuana and San Diego. And so, you know, as we continue to talk about San Diego is back, we are promoting the growth of our, of our economy and small businesses. Uh, we talk about how we do that, and you know, we were fortunate to be selected from. National Geographic is one of the urban cities uh, across the world that is leading this, leading that conversation. That's something we are uh, uh, we are proud of, and something that we, when we're talking to, whether it's trying to promote great companies and businesses that are here to grow, or try to attract some of the best talent from across the world. I love talking about come right here, 
Come do it in San Diego. Come do it and look at the advantages that we have with our region, Northern Baja. You know, one of the examples I talk a lot about, and uh, if you take what we're doing in medical device manufacturing, talking about innovation, what's happening in Tijuana and Northern Baja, we are the largest region for medical device manufacturing on the planet. That is very good news, and that's a competitive edge for us uh, here in our region. And Carlos, in North Grama, we have a lot of people who are familiar with the Tijuana and Baja California. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. One, one of the, the another, last question, I promise. <laughs> when I said also what's next, uh, being the world that uh, the smart city is a lot of uh, to attribute to the private companies, you know, like Hoya and scientific investigation and et cetera. Qualcomm just had a, uh, we did a story on uh, kids from different places to become, you know, the engineers, the robotics and all that. And we knew, uh, we saw the movie Spare Parts, where undocumented people feed uh, engineers from MIT. So what is in San Diego? Can we, uh, can they uh, give back to the community, especially the inner cities, about technology and schools that really don't have the budget and things like that? Can they help out in order to keep up surviving into this uh, era? Yeah, would be happy to answer that. You know, the, I think one of the most fascinating things about this documentary and what shines through is, is the Tourism Authority does an incredible job of promoting this beautiful place. And the mayor has done a tremendous job of reminding folks that San Diego is open for business. This is a documentary on a smart city that is really told through people. And you take Qualcomm, for example, who, who you can't tell the story of San Diego being a smart city or a smart region without Qualcomm. And Qualcomm, you know, they could have chose to focus on the history of innovation through Qualcomm and the growth of a huge international company. And instead, they chose to focus on the Think a Bit Lab, the laboratory that brings young boys and girls from throughout San Diego and Northern Baja together to actually see and engage with engineers and the people who are right now at the forefront of technology, knowing that the best thing they can possibly do is get those young people interested in math and science as well. And I think every time you watch a segment, whether it's on Illumina or whether it's why the Salk Institute first came to San Diego, it's constantly told in this documentary through people. And that's what I think the rest of the world is going to take away, is just the fascinating people who are doing scientific work at SeaWorld, the fascinating people who are powering our craft beer industry through science here in San Diego and the very diverse nature of that population here in this region. So some of you might not know White Labs. Uh, the person to my left, you're <laughs> right, um, uh, creates, along with many others, the unique uh, secret sauce that actually drives the craft beer industry. And maybe you want to make some comments about your company and a few other. Sure. Um, <clears throat> So the, the company started in 1995 here in San Diego and um, was started by Chris White, who's still currently the owner and CEO. And uh, it was really driven from a place of science. He actually got his undergrad at UC Davis up in Northern California. And that's where he developed this love or interest in beer. Uh, he moved to San Diego actually to, uh, to obtain his, his PhD uh, in biochemistry and it wasn't really something that he had thought about but because uh, craft brewing was starting at the early stages around the 1990s here in San Diego and he was able to meet the people that were sort of driving that craft beer movement. Um, you know, the folks at Ballast Point, um, Stone, were all starting right around the same time that he was here. And I think it was actually rather uh, serendipitous that, you know, these two things kind of came together. And it dawned on him that this could be an interesting business. You know, let's start producing yeast cultures for breweries. People wanted a better product, they wanted something different, they wanted something that was easy to use, and that's what he gave them. And that's sort of been the spirit of the company since 95, uh, where we're constantly striving to do new things and to innovate where innovation is not necessarily a thing. Nobody thinks about yeast, especially brewers and brewing and you know people that are consuming beer, no one really thinks about yeast as being an exciting topic. But for us, it is. <laughs> you know, we're talking about it all the time. What new things can we do? What, 
new products can we create? What else can we do to really drive beer to this other heightened place? Um, and that's kind of what we're, we're always looking at. So, uh, you know, we were very, very fortunate and uh, very honored to be part of the documentary because we get to share that story and what we do, uh, which is bringing two things together that you wouldn't really think belong together, beer and science. <coughs> You also, I think it's part of this agreement that you get to use, you get to have the rights, you get to use whatever where you want the uh, raw video, is that, is that correct? Correct. We, we own the rights. And, and how do you use that? Sure. Well, um, part of the project also are uh, vignettes that they're producing for us, for some of the companies that are featured. Um, short segments that we can abstract out of the 60-minute documentary. And um, we are already starting to plan on maybe a cut-down version, 30 minutes versus 46. It's 46 plus advertising, so it's really 46 minutes of tape. So we're looking at other op opportunities to do that. We don't have any restrictions. The only restrictions we have is we can't show it on a competing channel, and there are very few competing channels uh, in order to do that. If we went to the History Channel and said we want to show this on the History Channel, we would have to get their permission. But be beyond that, we own the rights to do it. I know Mark and I have talked, and we've talked to several other companies. They've already asked uh, for us to work with them to create their own messaging out of, out of the video or out of the documentary. Correct. So it's mostly vignettes for different companies? Or what, what are vignettes? Is it mostly companies? Or? Well, it's companies, but it really isn't short messages. So it's hard to sit through you know, an hour documentary or 46 minutes. We're also, with our airport partners, Hampton Brown and, and Thelar, we're also working on talking to airlines to show it on in-flights coming into San Diego. So there are many different ways that we can extend the use of this material, and we're looking for every opportunity to do that. And I think a another thing is, um, if, when you watch the documentary, you can't help but notice that lots of things beyond just companies tell this region's story and shine. This library shines in this documentary. Neighborhoods like Barrio Logan and Little Italy and their cultural history shine in this documentary. So again, I think when, you know, you can't get a 48 minute documentary perfect when you're trying to capture San Diego, but I think, um, you know, to, hats off to the folks at National Geographic. I think when San Diegans watch this, we're gonna be quite proud uh, of the region that we call home. It was, it was actually, just to add on, I think it was, it was an honor to actually be part of the documentary being to highlight San Diego at, you know, at Northrop do some unique things, but I think we're able to do that because San Diego has a unique, I think, talent, technology, innovation, tolerance, and just the ability that the city brings because, you know, we've got great universities, great research that's going on at the local universities, great companies think they do a lot of good things. We've been here since the 20s. We were part of uh, Northrop had now acquired Teledyne Ryan, which was here years ago. Their legacy, you know, initially was Spirit of St. Louis for Lindbergh. But the technologies evolved with the times, and now we've moved into the area of unmanned systems, which you look at it, I, I think of San Diego as kind of the capital of that technology. We've, got, we've done great stuff for the city here, uh, and working closely with the universities and so forth. So I, I really enjoyed being part of it. I thought it really brought to light that San Diego really is it's a smart city. We do some great things here. Kind of like Neva said, uh, interesting things, great places to do it. Uh, we love the climate, obviously, being here, but I think it's that blend of, you know, technology and talent that you find here that really helps you know, build the city and uh, stuff that we do at our companies. One more question? Probably goes without saying, but with the distribution of this video, this is gonna do a tremendous amount for our tourism. Uh, I mean, I, 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 can, I, can, I think all of us in this room can visualize that this is gonna bring a lot of people to San Diego just from seeing this alone. We know we are a great region and we're doing great things and still a lot more to do, uh, but part of telling our story is, is what makes us unique? Who are, who are the people that, that make this region smart? What are, we, what are we doing in terms of our neighborhoods and our culture? And that is something that we're very proud of. And so I think it's not only will it help people that are thinking, hey, I would, I would love to come uh, check out San Diego, uh, but I think it's also as we're trying increasingly to spur economic growth and investment uh, from company, you know, from not only here in the United States, but across the globe, to think of San Diego, to see what we're doing, to see the opportunities that we have, the access to the, you know, the Pacific Rim to, uh, to you know, to, to Mexico, to Latin America. That's a great uh, story to tell. And the more that that gets highlighted, I think the, the better opportunities that we do for people that just maybe weren't aware. And I think that's what's, uh, to me, most exciting.
Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. We'd be happy to uh, answer any uh, any additional questions uh, one on one. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir.